Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antiochian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Monday, July 15th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. Now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall understand fully, even as I have been fully understood. So faith, hope, love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Make love your aim and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, he who prophesies speaks to men for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, so that the church may be edified. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 17, verses 14 through 23. Let us be attentive. At that time a man came up to Jesus and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly. And often he falls into the fire, and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly, I say to you, if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move hence to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind never comes out except by prayer and fasting. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Our Lord's teachings are oftentimes full of paradoxes. We hear him say often that in order to gain our life, we have to lose it. We have to remember that in order to be first, we must be last. These kinds of teachings remind us that the things that the world treasures are not necessarily the things that get you into the kingdom of heaven. And today is a great example of this because as we think about it, as we grow and as we mature, we become more adult and we become more sophisticated and we become more complicated in the way that we think about things. And as we become an adult and become freer to do the things that we wish to do, and then we use our complications and our sophistications to do things and to justify things that we want, as opposed to doing the things that perhaps we should. Children, on the other hand, are dependents. When we think about taxes, we actually claim them as dependents. At any rate, when we think about a child, a child reasons simply child reasons humbly. It needs its support and its nourishment from, from another, from other sources. So in order to have a life, they have to have themselves lower than the people that are providing help to them. And so our Lord today is saying that we need to remember that as his followers, and indeed as children in the world, we should have a sense of simplicity and humility 
that cause us to realize that we are not the greatest. We're not even the most sophisticated, but what we are are children of Christ. It is not, well, it is not unintentional that the story of the tax and the story of the children are tied together. We are dependent on the powers and as a result of being dependent on those powers, even here in these great United States, we still have to hold on to our obligations. The government doesn't tax itself, it taxes others. We should honor the tax. Not because we worship the government or because even that we believe what the government is doing is right, but we want them in stability. And we want them to look at us in that same stability. We want tranquility and peace so that we can live our lives in sanctity and godliness. This is an important theme, especially right now. We should not place undue faith in a government. But what we should do is recognize that whatever it is the government wants, the government can have. Why? Because as our Lord says elsewhere, do not worry about the things that can harm the body. Worry about those things that can damage or kill the soul. So everything else is secondary in concern. Our primary goal is not to follow the government. Our primary goal is not to worship the government or any figure of it, but instead to follow after Christ. But in order to follow after Christ, we have to live a life unfettered from the kinds of cares that can come from spending too much time worrying about worldly forces. So deal with the forces simply and quickly without problems and without consternation. And instead, do what can be done to free one's mind to serve after Christ and to follow him with all of our attention and devotion. It's not easy, but it is doable, and all of us should develop the practices necessary in order to do just that. Well, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the section below. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and everyone that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.